the end of that chapter is like, I'll be honest, if I had to guess, if you forced me to guess what was gonna happen, I, I couldn't. I would not have even gotten close. Finally, we are getting into Alan Wake 2. I have a plan going forward for all the story games that I play. A lot of times you'll see people post videos on like part one, part two, part three, and they'll, and they'll play pretty much like as much as the game as they can and they'll squeeze it into a video. What I wanna do for these games going forward is because they are so story focused, we're playing a lot of games these days that are just like movies and you get to play through it. Alan Wake 2 being probably one of the most movie-like games that you're gonna see especially this year in 2023. You know, I played through Spider-Man, absolutely loved it, a great, great story. And over the last couple months, I've, I've gotten into story games again. That I used to play them when I was younger and Alan Wake was one of the games that I was addicted to when it first came out years ago. And when I first heard that it was coming out, first off, it, it was kind of weird. I'm like, ah, I wonder how people will take to that because it's been so long. I believe it's been 13 years, but it looks like people are taking to it really well. I was kind of holding out because I don't typically buy games when they first come out unless it's something that I've been anticipating for a long time. And for Alan Wake 2, I just, I kind of wanted to just wait it out. And obviously it's getting very good reviews. So I'm going to be playing through Alan Wake 2. I'm going to pace it out really well. I'm going to only post parts of the game so that you can follow along in the most precise way. I will be uploading it within the playlist of Alan Wake as well. So it'll be easy to decipher episode one, episode two and every single episode that we play through, however they structure it in the game, is how I'm going to be posting those videos. So it'll be very easy for you to follow along. I don't really know what to expect for Alan Wake 2 because the first game was pretty scary. It wasn't horror scary. And, and with what I've seen, the limited information I know about Alan Wake 2, it is a little bit more down the realm of horror. So we're gonna explore that. I am not someone who's super comfortable with the horror side of things. So we'll see how I react to it, but regardless, this is something I'm looking forward to and a new series of how I post my content for you guys to enjoy, starting with Alan Wake 2, episode one. Let's get into it. Story, what's the difference? I guess story being the easiest, but is it just, do you just not play? It's kind of interesting, eh? I remember in the first game, if you've never played it before, I definitely recommend going through it and playing it. I didn't play the remastered, which I really should have leading up to this game, but I wasn't really in that story mode genre quite yet. I remember it was so stressful. You'd be like running into cabins, looking for batteries. You wouldn't want to go any further unless you were more well-equipped, trying to look for flares and batteries and so stressful, but so fun. Here we go. Back to the beginning. We all come to a story with hopes and expectations, looking for an answer. Sometimes it would be better to live with that hope without ever knowing the full story. In a horror story, there are only victims and monsters. And the trick is not to end up as either. But trapped by the genre, we are all ripped to pieces along the way. This is not the ending I wanted. This story will eat us alive. This story is a monster. And monsters wear many faces. Monsters wear many faces. Man, what's up with this guy? Guess I'll turn up my audio, even though I don't want to. Okay. Frick, I am, I'm legit a sissy. I'm just gonna be straight up like, that first one got me. Like I felt the shivers on my, outside of my arms. 
All right. Not sure how fast sprinting is gonna be with this large fella, but. Oh, they took out his heart. Gosh, didn't make it far with that guy, did we? I'm good, Mom. How are you? This trip might take a little longer than I thought. I'm sorry I've been gone so much lately, Logan. Oh my god, Mom, it's not your fault. People get all murdery. What's happened? Just work stuff. Right. Well, Dad and I are just watching the latest episode of Night Springs here. Mom, it's so good. No spoilers. I'll let you get back to the show. You were supposed to wait and watch with me. Which reminds me, saying something is good is a spoiler, this is what okay? Happens when you go on work trips, Mom. Love you too. I want to know nothing. Say hi to Casey. Tell him to stop brooding. That reminds me so much of Alberta. That's crazy. I will. Bye, kiddo. That guy Logan looks creepy. Up. Hmm. Snarky kid. Wonder where she gets that from. <laughs> it can't be a coincidence that another body turns up just as we arrive in town. Feels like the killer's leaving us a message. I'm glad you're on this case with me, Anderson. It's right up your alley. You should take lead. Think of me as the backup. Okay. Any words of advice? Nothing that would cheer anyone up. Here we are. Seems like a depressing guy. Deputy was supposed to be here to show us to the crime scene. There's the car, so where's the deputy? <laughs> Eaten by a bear? I'll check out that map. Invitation. Uh, worth memorizing before we get swallowed up by the trees. You're the one who wanted to switch. I think I hear someone. Could be our deputy. I can go take a look. Hey, over here. Hey there. Agent Casey, right? Sheriff Raker said you'd be coming by to take over the case. You're half right. Saga Anderson, I'll be leading this case. Seems you already know my partner, Alex Casey. Jeez. Sorry about that, ma'am. I'm Deputy Mulligan. I just figured that, you know, that... Uh, Federal agents right here, Thornton. My partner Thornton, <laughs> down at the crime scene. 
He's not what you call the sharpest axe in the shed. I could use a briefing. About the crime scene? Tell them about the heart. I was getting to that, Warden. Well, we reckon there are some uh, organs that are currently outside the victim's person when they should be, well, you know, inside. Were there any witnesses? Yeah, a couple out of towners. I wonder what they were doing sneaking around the woods at night. <laughs> Do you have anything against city folk, Clive Thornton? But don't worry. Sheriff Breaker took him back to town a while ago. I want to see the body. How do we get there? Oh, sure. That's real simple. Just through the hole in the fence, down the hill towards the lake, around the old convenience store. You can't miss it. Everything's been closed since the area was fenced off. The store, the campground, all of it. Before we get to the crime scene, there's time to review the facts of the case so far. Make sure I'm seeing the clues clearly. I need to think through the facts of the case. The mind place. My version of the mind palace technique. To sift through clues and work the case. Building the mind place again for each case. Using each field office as a model in my head. The facts are on the board. Everything we know about the previous murders. Worth taking another look. The slight difference in murders. Bloating on the commonality in bodies, but not cause of death. Chest trauma, exposure to water, post-mortem. All victims reported missing in 2010. Stab wounds, bloating, bruising on the wrists. Gave his teacher. Body bloated, large chest wound. Percy Wolf store owner. Heart removed, strange tattoos. Bruising on wrists and legs, deep gash in the chest, heart missing. All bodies experienced bloating. Hmm. Killer profile. Postmortem tattooing of the body. Animal butchery techniques. Okay. I see you're already hard at work, Anderson. Close to cracking it. We're just getting started. Let's head down the hill to the crime scene. You putting me in charge. Why now? Look, Anderson, you're a better detective than I am. You've cracked cases that have the rest of us baffled. I don't want to slow you down. Are you thinking of retiring? You know what happens to cops who say this is their last case. Mm-hmm. Real funny, Anderson. You okay to jump down? I'm not that old. <laughs> Just a little hop. Barely a jump. Let's get a move on it. Talking nature gives me a headache. Please die. Buy. Goodness, you know he's been Not a working bad in the city most murdered. of his life. Hmm. If getting back to nature is your thing. Damn. Should have brought an umbrella. I like the rain. The only thing around here that feels like home. You think the local law had the sense to put up a tarp? Hmm. If they did, next coffee's on me. This guy. Hey! Deputy Thornton, I take it. That's me. At There's your a service. chatterbox. Ready to get this case solved. Now the body's behind the store. Come on, I'll show you. You know he doesn't get a lot of action. He's like, I'm ready to get this case solved. I'm sure it's going to be more complex than that, sir. FBI, huh? That's so cool. Yeah, exactly. Down psycho serial killers and shootouts with the mob. You forgot the UFO cover-ups. What? Those are real? You guys hiring? <laughs> Let's just see this body, shall we? Oh boy. Now this is the scene of the crime. We found him on the table. Now he didn't touch nothing, you know, procedures and stuff. Thanks, deputy. No tarp. They hide us. You owe me a coffee. Didn't hide his wiener. <laughs> Let's start by examining our guest of honor. Does Yikes. this fit the MO of the previous murders? Look at that. Holy frick, that's Step aggressive. One. Examine the corpse. 
Body is positioned on the table. Ritualistic. Another body turns up just as we arrive in town. Coincidence? When a key image is placed, it will prompt a new question. The killer left the heart right next to the body. Inside stab wound, chest cut open, heart removed. Bruising on the wrist from the cargo straps holding him down. That is a serious wound. Look at the ribs. Oof. Gosh. Heart removed from chest, strapped by the wrists. Definitely matches the previous murders. But this time the heart and the straps were left behind. More clues to work with. This makes four murders that we know about. The clues has, have resolved the open question and unlocked the deduction. As you advance the investigation, new questions will be unlocked, updating your goals. Who is our victim? Who killed him? Need to find more clues. Large amount of blood on the table. Oh, yeah. The victim died here. Multiple people were here. Multiple killers? Makes sense. Someone was drinking beer. They spent time here. Waiting. And they recorded Someone it. left in a hurry. Knocked the tripod over. Was it for a camera? Any idea who the victim is? Oh, I sure do. His name is Nightingale. He was FBI. He came to town about 13 years ago. And I haven't heard a word about him since. Huh. Until now. Nightingale. Robert Nightingale. Oh, yes. You probably knew him. Brothers in arms. Oh, and sisters. So you knew our victim? Well, I didn't recognize him in his current state. But yeah, I ran into him a few times at Quantico. Never worked any cases together. After his partner got killed in the field, he went off the deep end. Got the boot pretty quick after that. So what happened to Nightingale after the Bureau let him go? I only know the rumors. Depression led to booze, booze led to paranoia. He got some wild ideas in his head, chased ghosts until he fell off the map. Guess he ended up here. I bet there's more to that story. But no happy ending. Nightingale went missing 13 years ago, 2010. The same as all the other victims. Certainly fits the pattern. Makes me wonder what was going on that year. Probably something this town wants to forget. I think that's everything. For now, at least. Mm-hmm. Anything else? Robert Nightingale, ex-FBI, came to Bright Falls 13 years ago. Definitely seems premeditated, just by how... Prepared they were. The clues. I'm gonna go check something out. Be right back. Got it. A creepy twig sculpture? Hey there, Mr. Deer. You remind me of a dream I had. Twig sculpture. Sketchy trailer. Let this be a warning to you fellow trespassers. They say the lake is a caldera, something formed by an erupting volcano or the sinkholes it leaves in its wake. But what if that's not true? What if it's something else, something less natural and much more man-made, intentional? I say the lake's not formed, it's designed, and it has a purpose. All right, you weirdo. The lake is a hiding place. Beneath the calm surface lies a secret machinery re ready 
to be activated at the press of a button. And the people with the button, they're in that big house by the lake preparing. What's going on over here? Look, I get that the UFO thing was a joke, but you're probably trained to joke about it, right? To deflect, hide the truth from the average Joe. Anderson. Hey, let's get back to work over here, can we? Keep wandering around over here. See what we can find. I think I saw something. It'll only take a minute. I'll wait here. Hello, this is Agent Anderson and Agent Casey, FBI. We'd like to come in and ask a few questions pertaining to an investigation. The station heads are not currently available. Access is restricted without their permission. Nice talking to you, too. Hmm. Is that a kid's lunchbox? An Alex Casey movie lunchbox. Casey hates the endless jokes about coincidentally having the same name as a fake detective. He hates those cheesy crime books, but he really hates the movies. But he should be following me. It's probably not safe. <laughs> What do we have here? Which is Layla? Whoa, 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 whoa. There is no mystery in Cauldron Lake being named after its cauldron shape, and yet there are many mystery stories, mysterious stories about the lake. It being a gloomy doorway to the underworld or a or of a witch whose cauldron the lake really was. Legend that when she, when the affections of a local sheriff went unanswered, he accused the lady in question of bewitched him. She was drowned, but her dropped ladle grew into a strange tree named Witch's Ladle. The woman returned to avenge her wrongdoers. She was not a witch before she was now. She was one now. She killed the sheriff, drowning him in the lake. Then she took out his heart and locked it in a box. With the heart, she would summon him from the lake to exact revenge on her behalf, or so goes the legend. Okay, these people cutting out the heart has some, oof, that is very figurative. Something to do with their belief behind that. I'm getting flashbacks. Remember Ohio? Sure, the North Side Slasher. But that case was completely different. The trees, Anderson. He hid the bodies in the forest. Okay. Can't go any further. Water's too deep. He hid the bodies in the forest, he just said. I snuck out last night again, went to the big house by the lake, instead of just watching it from here like I always do. Instead of just sitting around like I always do. Screw that. Anyway, something weird is going on down there. I'm going to find out what. Going to go back there tomorrow with better gear. I bet I can find a way inside the building. Take some photos. It's going to be epic. That's pretty fresh. Yeah, I'm going to need that. Interesting spot. A lunchbox again. Who's leaving these out here? They planned for the murder to happen here. Passing the time with equipment ready. They were waiting for him. But why Nightingale? He's been missing for 13 years. Why here? Why now? Profiling. Get into the subject's head. See what they saw. Feel what they felt. Use whatever I know about them to guide my intuition toward revelation. Piece it together.
Nightingale was chosen as the victim. Why? Click the switch. It goes click. Lights are off. It's somebody's home. Somebody's home. This wasn't some random act of violence. This was a ritual. A Nightingale a component. They didn't see him as a person. More like a container for something. Exactly. Agent Nightingale has been MIA for 13 years. How did he end up here? Up from the lake that's not a lake. It's dark. He was there too. You are not allowed in the lake until he says otherwise. Robert Nightingale came from the lake before mm -hmm. his murder. That is correct. From the lake that's not a lake. It's dark. He was there too. You are not allowed in the lake until he says otherwise. Point of interest cases track objectives. Finding a Casey Moody lunchbox out here can't be a coincidence. Another message the lake is connected to Nightingale somehow. Casey. Let's take a look down by the lake. Oh boy. Lead the way. Sounds good. Uh, this way, right? Right. Whoa, 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 whoa. I was not expecting for her to bust that door down like that. Frick. Okay. The witch's hut. Here lived the witch of Cauldron Lake, where her spirit may still haunt this place. Nah. I don't believe that. I do not believe that. Good to see you still in one piece, Anderson. Forest can be a dangerous place. Alright, we're back with him. I didn't know trees where I feel safe. That big. Holy crap. Gives me the creeps. You need to get out more. It is kind of creepy, though. Oof. There's a piece of paper on the ground. Tracks. Barefoot. Nightingales? They come out from yep. under the boulder. It makes no sense. A page full of text on one side. Not a printout. Written with a typewriter. Old school. Lines scratched out and edits added with a pen. Mm -hmm. Like a manuscript. A page of a story. Mm. Killer left a message. It's for us. The text is about us. The victim was one of their own. FBI Special Agent Robert Nightingale. And then there was the page they found. The first step down into terrifying depths. Reading, Reading words. words. These words felt like a message. Felt like a message. Someone knew they were here. Someone playing a game with them. An, An invitation. invitation. How could they not accept? Someone's been watching us. Playing a sick game with us. You were right. This is right up my alley. Nightingale came this way. Either he dropped this page, or the killers left it for us. I should profile Nightingale about this page. Hmm. I think he came from the lake, but his tracks make no sense. Oof. That's chilling. The killer is watching us. We found a page in the woods, a story about these events. What is 
Nightingale's role in this? I carry his words close to my chest now. Inside, the awful truth. He must dig it out. Something was put inside him. In his chest. I must find out what. The victim was one of their own. FBI Special Agent Robert Nightingale, gone missing here 13 years ago. Now he had suddenly turned up, only to be murdered in a brutal ritual on the very day of their arrival. And then there was the page. This page, the first page that they had found, not the last, the first step down into terrifying depths, secret truths trembling beyond the threshold. Reading the words, these words, felt like a message. Was a message. Someone knew they were here, what they were doing. Someone playing a game with them, leading them on. An invitation. How could they not accept? The sheer audacity of this impossible mystery presented to them, even if they knew it would end up hurting them. Found all I can here. Time to properly examine the body. See what I can find inside. Casey, I think something's been put inside Nightingale's body. Let's tell the deputies to get the body to the town morgue. Okay. Whoever wrote that page made sure it read like a story. Like a scene from a thriller. I hate all of them. <laughs> I'm with them. I believe in it. But what's the purpose? They're twisting events to create their own narrative to do what? Entertain some fantasy? Projecting their desires? Are we characters or the audience? Witnesses to their design? All the above? It's all about control. Deciding what happens to who. Don't let it drag you in. Too late. I'm already hooked. I need the next chapter. Oh boy. I'm kind of leaning more towards his side of things. I'm uh, very much like, can we not? But I'm playing the game, so. stuck in any of those big puddles. Crazy flooding down there, huh? Just like I said. Deputy, I want the body taken back to town for a proper examination, ASAP. Well, sure, but the coroner won't be back in town for another week after Deerfest. Not a problem. I'll do it myself. Oh, and Sheriff Breaker called to say he's got the bookers at the Odeer Diner in town. Oh, and I've got a key to the gate. It's a shortcut back to the parking lot just up the hill. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Let's get the car, drive to Bright Falls, and talk to these witnesses, the bookers. At the diner, right? I, I could use a cup of coffee. Let's try that shortcut the deputy mentioned. Sounds good. Seems like a nice town so far. Burgess aside. Pretty woods. Cute lodge we got set up in. We should go for a hike if we get a chance. Now you're just being mean. Eh? We're hiking. Anderson, Deputy we're hiking exactly right now. Exactly up to the task, but hopefully the sheriff will be more helpful. Not a surprise about the deputies. Doubt you'll see much stuff this group. Can't fit the clues all together yet. Heart removed, tripod, tracks leading to a dead end. A tripod for a camera? To record a yep. snuff film? Maybe. And why take out his heart just to throw it away? To stuff in something for us to find. Gosh, that's messed, eh? <laughs> Here we are. Let's drive back to town and meet the sheriff at the diner. I can't get that manuscript page out of my head. I've never seen killers reach out so directly before. Damn impressive work so far. With your technique, these punches were moving fast. I wasn't sure about taking a case so far from home, but I'm thrilled to be here for this mystery. Swing by the lodge to get anything from the field office? 
No, I'm all set. I'll park there anyway. I want to walk to the diner. Get a feel for the town. The town doesn't look like it has much feel. It's pretty quiet. The diner's just up the waterfront. Shouldn't keep the sheriff and our witnesses waiting. I smell coffee. You don't typically see these guys promoting in uh, small towns. Hey, guys. Don't care. How much have you had? Not enough. That's all much. Never enough. Amen to that. Sure, my <laughs> I mean our float will be the bell of the ball of this oh fest. dear just a few more days you it's a nice looking float the chef this it's is beautiful here friend, so I don't know what to expect it is let me guess the FBI welcome to <laughs> good guess sir it's nice to have you here I got you both some coffee oh it's Washington's finest nice to meet you sheriff I'm set for coffee. You know, I wouldn't say no to another. I'm Agent Saga Anderson. This is Agent Alex Casey. Jim Brinker. And let me just say, I'm happy you two are here. Frankly, we could use the help. Your deputies said you had a couple of witnesses here. They made them sound like suspects. Mulligan and Thornton are still on about that? No, no, the bookers don't strike me as the murdering type, but you can decide for yourselves. They're just inside having coffee and pie to calm their nerves. I'll see what they have to say. Casey, you compare notes with the sheriff. Take your time. We've looked through the case files you sent over, Sheriff. And you have many people besides the known victims go missing? Excuse me. I'm Agent Saga Anderson. Are you the bookers? That's us. I'm Tammy, and he's Ed. Hello, officer. Just Saga is fine, Ed. So, are we being charged with anything? Because if not, we'd love to get back to our hotel and decompress after what we saw. Take a bath, screw into pillows, that kind of thing. We're not charging you. I just have a few questions. Nothing to stress about, okay? What were you doing at Cauldron Lake last night? I'm a writer. True crime. We're here from New York, doing some research on a famous novelist, Alan Wake, who went missing here. I was down at the lake, getting some details. Perfectly legal. So what did you see in the woods? This naked dude came out of the lake, and he was acting crazy, weird shit at us. He must have been on something. Unless skinny dipping at dawn is a thing around here. Then we heard shooting. We ran into these psychos in deer masks. They were tearing into the naked guy with knives, like some kind of satanic cult. And then we bolted. They call the cops. She is not shook at all. Like, he's definitely messed up about it, about seeing it. And look at her. She is just stone-faced. What makes you say it was a cult? The masks and knives aren't enough. We, they were shouting, Call the bitch me. Call the bitch me. Call the bitch me. Oh, and then we found a... Whole thing was terrifying. That's all. Hmm. The cult of the tree. What aren't the bookers telling me? I found their necklace. The symbol is two triangles. The cult wants their spruce tree back, Tammy. Finders keepers, Ed. My publisher will want this on the cover. Tammy found something. Mm -hmm. A necklace belonging to one of the cultists. The bookers were at Cauldron Lake. Why? This was built to hide what's there. They say the writer found the lake. Private party. No trespassing. My book has questions. Pass the bolt cutter. They broke in for the sake of Tammy's book. Nothing to do with the murder. 
they were telling the truth. Hmm. We're dealing with an organized group of killers. Not a lone serial killer. That's right. I need to know more about the code of the tree if I'm going to shut them down. So you found something there, right? A necklace these cultists may have dropped. Okay. Wow. How did you put that together? It's evidence. You need to hand it over. Okay. Told you not to keep that thing. Thanks, Tammy. Thanks. This could prove to be helpful. Do me a favor. Stick around town for now in case we have any more questions. <laughs> like you'd even dream of missing me. Oh, God. Saga! Saga Anderson. As I live and breathe. I thought we'd never see you back here after that awful, awful thing happened to your baby girl. Sorry. Who are you? I don't know what you're talking about. It's me, silly. Rose. You know me. I don't think I do. And what horrible thing happened to my baby girl? She drowned. Your daughter. <laughs> That's so weird. You don't remember. How do you know I have a daughter? blocking out your traumatic memories happens on TV all the time no you're mistaking me for someone else <laughs> if you say so what that's bone chilling what the frick all set my guys have Nightingale at the morgue, if you're ready to go take a look. Let's go. Whew. Well, Casey, I got a lead. Looks like we're dealing with a cult. The That's cult for sure. The cult of the tree. The murder cult. Fuck. Have you heard of this cult of the tree, Sheriff? Only the urban legend. If you're in the woods at night, the cult will get you. That sort of thing. We're not gonna find out you're the Grand Wizard or something, are we? <laughs> Played some D&D back in the day. Wizard was always my favorite class. Morning, Sheriff. Looks like we have some guests. Ah, uh, morning, Ted. Yeah, real important guests. Deer fan. Always drive the crowd, right? <laughs> Too true. More the merrier. Have a good one, Sheriff. Just checking you both out. Make sure you're looking clean. Hey, what do you know about that waitress from the diner? <laughs> Rose? <laughs> yeah, she's a bit of a space case. Always has been. Why? What'd she do now? She kept saying that my daughter drowned. She even knew my name. It was all very weird. Rose has a talent for saying the weirdest thing possible. What the heck? Let's not take it personally. Rose has a talent for saying the weirdest thing possible. There's the quote of the day so far. Hey boss, corpse is downstairs ready to go. Yep, in the morgue, all prepped. I'd like to take a closer look as soon as possible. Lead the way, Sheriff. I'll be right with you, Oh, this sir. is the Bright Falls Sheriff Station. Yep, yep. Yes, Anything you need, pay my just uh, let us know. We appreciate the support, Sheriff. Have a nice day. Agent? Just taking a little wander around, making sure everything's good. As you know. I'm going to shut that door. <laughs> oh my. Oh. Did somebody call for a tour guide? Oh wow. Coscola Brothers Adventure Tours. 
Unforgettable tour experiences at affordable prices. That's right. I'm Neil Mokoskala, both his best coffee roaster slash tour guide by Coffee World magazine. And I'm here to give you the tour of a lifetime. But Ilmo, I've heard the government has seized and restricted access to many local nature attractions. That is true, Yanko. Many local attractions have recently become fenced off by the government. And that's why, at Kotkala Brothers Adventure Tours, we say, fuck the government. Oh! We have both come <coughs> <laughs> you think of everything. And we'll take you anywhere. Wow. Through the scenic I love it. National Park. Fishing in the crystal clear waters of Bright Bulls Dam. Bird watching at Majestic um, Mirror Peak. This is incredible. A tour of <laughs> Nine percent discount, folks. That is the first time I want to buy it just for the nine percent discount. That's amazing. It's probably like nineteen ninety nine. You get a nine percent discount. Are you kidding me? So we share a morgue with the funeral home next door. They're cheaper in budget. I guess you guys don't have that problem though. Our only coroner rotates between a few other towns, and he's away this week. But you can handle this, right? I'm qualified to perform examinations. Yes. Something about morgues, they always cheer me up. I can't say I feel the same. He's joking. Because he looks like a dead corpse, this guy. His face is all sunken in. Can't say the same, he said. Yeah, the okay. morgue is awful. Let's take a look at our patient. I'll start with the external inspection before performing the internal examination. What was the cause of death? What other clues can the body give me? This looks like text. A tattoo? I mean, he doesn't really strike me as a tattoo guy. Defensive wounds. He put up a fight. The body <laughs> shows signs of being submerged in water post-mortem. It doesn't add up. No, it doesn't. I don't want to look at the wound. They did leave something inside his chest. There's writing on here. Oh my gosh, there's Can't writing on... Out. There's writing on the heart. Time to see what Nightingale's body can tell us. Illegible words, illegible words on the heart. Did the killers write this on the heart? How? I can't make out what it says. Nah. Oof, the body is so bloated. Chest wound is cause of death, but the corpse is bloated, waterlogged. Doesn't add up. There's definitely something in his chest. Did the killers leave it there? Doesn't make sense, yeah. The tattoos. I, I fear going back to the body to figure it out. Oh dear. I love that. That's that is awesome. The Cascella's ad. I'm all for that. That's friggin' great. Okay. Look at his dong just hanging out. Oof. Is she not wearing gloves or anything? Okay, why is she touching all this stuff? It's the same type of page we found at Cauldron Lake. Nightingale haunted saga. Didn't see her. The Taken could not see into 
Nightingale had no heart, but here he was. Killing. Someone's created a fucked up fantasy about us. Hey, hold on. We found these kinds of pages. I didn't think they were relevant to this case. I have them right here. make you pay. What the f see me in the light. Frick. My gun's out in the hall. Gotta get it back. Safe havens will restore some of your health. If you leave her attack from a safe haven. Go. Where in the hall? Oh my gosh, dude. What a freaking twist. The end of that chapter is like... I'll be honest, if I had to guess what was gonna happen, if you forced me to guess what was gonna happen, I, I couldn't. I would not have even gotten close to that. Whew.